Number 16, assuming that no equilibria other than dissolution are involved, calculate the concentration of all solute species in each of the following solutions of salts in contact with a solution containing a common ion, and then show that the changes in the initial concentrations of the common ion can be neglected. Okay, and then for this problem, we have uh, Ag2CrO4, right? They're telling us that that's a solid. That's the compound that's going to be dissolved going under dissolution. And then it's in a 0.225 liter uh, of a solution containing 0.856 grams of K2CrO4. Now, we can't do this problem without finding the solubility product of Ag2CrO4, right? So I went in the back of a textbook and I found out what that Ksp value is. It's 9.0 times 10 to the negative 12th. Now, what is a Ksp without a balanced equation? It's nothing. So we got to write out the balanced equation for the compound that has the Ksp. Remember, the solid is always the one that is having a Ksp value. So in this case, we have to dissolve Ag2CrO4 and see what two ions it breaks down into. So Ag2CrO4, that's a solid, and this will be in equilibrium because we're dealing with K values. And I think, yeah, I think we're good. We have to find out what those two ions are, but I noticed that I have a polyatomic ion here, right? The CrO4 chromate. So the split has to be between the silver and the chromate because polyatomics always stick together. So we have Ag plus CrO4. Now we just have to find out what those states are in the upper right hand corner, right? But you can do your crisscross method, right? Use the subscripts to crisscross back up. Keep in mind that the four is part of the polyatomic. So you technically have one CRO4. This two crisscrosses up telling me that the chromate was a negative two and the one crisscrosses up telling me that the silver was a plus one. So silver, has a plus one charge, chromate has a negative two, and then you just gotta balance it. So there's two AGs, right? I see a two here. So I have to put a two in front of the AG, but then there's one chromate, CRO4, one CRO4. So we're good. I just know that anytime that you have a charge, they're aqueous, right? So these two are aqueous and the reactant is a solid. Okay, so I'm just gonna take this and put it off to the side. First part is done. Now I'm gonna use this to make my general KSP formula. Remember, the KSP formula is this, right? It's just concentration of products raised to the coefficients. So in this case, we have KSP equals the two products, right? Ag plus times by the CrO4, two minus. But just pay attention, we have to raise those to their coefficients, the big numbers in the front. Well, there was a two in front of the Ag and nothing in front of the chromate. That means that there was one of them. So since there was a two in front of the Ag, I have to raise the Ag to the second power. And then for a one, I could raise it to the first, but that's the same thing. The Ksp we found was 9.0 times 10 to the negative 12th in the back of the textbook. But I don't know what the concentrations of Ag plus and the CrO4 two minus. So that's when I'm going to start using my variables. However, this is the part of the uh, question where you go look back and see, do you have any other compounds? This is a common ion question. Seems like I have this compound already in a solution that has K2CrO4. Well, K2CrO4, I see that I have a group one ion. And remember our solubility rules Anytime that you have a group one ion, those compounds are always going to be aqueous. They're going to dissolve into their two components. So I have K2CrO4. This is aqueous. This will break down 100% into its two ions. And remember, the chromate has to stick together. So it would be K. Oh boy. K, and then we have. CrO4. Now, from the beginning, we already told, you know, that the CrO4 was a negative two charge. And then K, potassium is group one. Those ions are always a plus one charge. Just make sure that you're balancing. I have two potassiums. 
So I have to put a two in front of here, but I have one chromate, one chromate. So I'll put a one here and then I'll just put a one in front of here because these coefficients are going to come into play in a little bit. But the thing is, is that when we're trying to plug in values, these brackets mean molarity, but they didn't give me any molarity values. They gave me a liter and they gave me a mass, right? For grams. But remember, molarity equals moles divided by liters. So we already know the liters. It's something divided by 0 0.225. But now I just have to find the moles. Well, they gave me grams. I know how to go from grams to moles, right? I just divide by the molar mass. So maybe I'll just put this up here. We're going to divide by the mm. We could do the conversion factor, but we're in chapter 15, right? We could do some tricks. So I'm just going to put in parentheses what that molar mass is. So I'm going to go to my periodic table and find out what K2CrO4 is. So 39.1 times 2 plus a chromium, that's 52, plus 4 times 16. 194.2, right? Grams per mole. So if I take my 0.856 and divide it by 194.2, I get out my mole value, right? And my moles are 4.4078. That's good enough. I rounded a little bit, but I think all the way there doesn't really matter. Okay. So I'm going to just take my mole value, 4.4. 078 times 10 to the negative second, uh, negative third, sorry about that, and divide by the liters. That will be the molarity of the K2CRO4 because they said it was K2CRO4. So 4.4 times, uh, no, 4.4078 times 10 to the negative third divided by 0.225. And I will say that this is 0. 0.0. .0 one nine five nine that's pretty good okay but now i need to find out what these ions are because that's going to be what's in common literally it's called a common ion so out of these two ions the two sets which is the common ion which is the one that is the same between the two uh balance equations yeah it's the cro4 right so I don't even care about the potassium. You don't even have to do the work to find that out. You just got to find out what you started with with CRO4. But it's a one to one. So whatever number you have here, it's going to be the same number. So 0 0.01959, right? 0 0.019, yeah. And now this was the initial solution. This is what you were beginning with, right? So as soon as you say the word initial, Brings back bad memories of the ice table. So we have to do that. I, C, E. Beautiful. Beautiful. I guess I'll just pull this down a little bit. Bring this eye down. Okay. So remember, solids, nobody cares in terms of the uh, ice table per se, because none of them are going to be plugged in into the equation. And this is your initial for your chromate. So 0 0.01959, that's what you initially started off with. You didn't start off with any AG, so zero. Change, you can only go up from here, but by how much, nobody knows. So plus, and then we'll put something in terms of X, but it has to go with your coefficient. So this would be plus 2X, and this would be plus 1X. 0 plus 2x is 2x. This whole thingamajig together is 0 0.01959 plus x. Okay. Now, we're going to take these equilibrium values and plug them into our equation. So the ag is going to be 2x, and this is going to be the 0 0.01959 plus x. But now here's where this change can be neglected, right? Basically, since this KSP value is so small, it's times 10 to the negative 12th, 
whatever you started with, the change, the increase is probably not going to budge this number. It's going to be probably so, 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 so small that this number is probably going to be the same. So we can assume, we could assume that the equilibrium concentration is probably going to be roughly about this, and we don't care about that plus x. Then we do a little check at the end just to see if we assumed right. That's the 5% rule, but we got to find out the math, right? So let's go for it. 9.0 times 10 to the negative 12 equals, we got 2x, well, 2x squared outside, right? And then we have that big number, 0 0.01959. 2x squared is 2x times 2x, which is 4x squared in total. Let's times the 4 by this number. And then we will go on from there. So 9 times 10 to the negative 12 equals 0 0.0195 times 4, which is 0 0.078. That's x squared. We're going to divide on both sides by 0 0.078, 0 0.078. That gets rid of this. And then we have something equal to x squared. So 9 times 10 to the negative 12 divided by 0 0.078. I get 1.15. We shouldn't really round here because it's not the final answer. Uh, 1.153846. We'll say 5. That's good enough. And this is times 10 to the negative 10th, right? Yep. Got to take that square root because we got to solve for x. And then, so square root of 1.15385 times 10 to the negative 10th. Now I'll say three sig figs. 1.07 times 10 to the negative fifth, and that's molarity. Now, just to see if we can neglect it, we're going to do the 5% rule. So 5% rule means that you take your x value and divide it by your initial concentration, 0 0.01959, and you're just going to times it by 100. If this is 5 or less, we assumed correctly, and we could keep on with our math. But if it's over 5%, then we have to go back and keep that plus x in there and then torture ourselves with the quadratic equation. So fingers crossed. 1.07 times 10 to the negative fifth divided by 0 0.01959 times 100. We don't even get 1%. So this clears it. This clears the 5% rule by way. We're way good. So I'm just going to put a check here. Now we just take this x value and divvy it up for all the x's in our equilibrium. Notice how I still go back and I plus the x value into the actual equilibrium expression. So where am I going to put this? Well, I guess I'll move this over and I have a little room here. So the AG concentration is, keep in mind, it was two times the x value. So I have to do two times this. So 2 times 1.07 times 10 to the negative fifth, I get 2.14 times 10 to the negative fifth molarity. And then for the chromate, the CRO4, it's 0 0.01959 plus the X value. So 0 0.01959 plus 1.07 times 10 to the negative fifth. And does it even move it? It moves it a little bit. 0 0.0196, we'll say. No one cares about sig figs. At least I don't. So we're going to leave it as that. Yay. So these are your two answers, guys. That's what it means to calculate all of the solute species. They just wanted you to find out what those two ions were. All right. 
So thank you so much for tuning in. I really hope this helps. Subscribe to the channel if you want to help us out. Thank you so much for that. We're almost at 20,000 and it's all because of you guys. It's crazy. It's crazy. I will talk to you soon. Have an awesome day. Bye-bye.